Hey, sexy friend. He's making me his bitch. Maybe you want to get a piece of that. Pretty good. I want to talk about sexy teens. I was getting erections. It's a very creepy feeling. I can guarantee that underwear theft will come up again. None of this is relevant. Pokemon, Pokeballs. 750 milliliter bottle of rum. Welcome to the Velocity Podcast. A study in monology. This is your grumpy uncle Peter. He will say words at you. There is the expression, you can catch more flies with honey. But every time anyone's ever told me that, I first of all wonder, why are you trying to catch flies? Because I don't want the flies. And if I have honey, I probably want to eat the honey. And I don't want flies in my honey. So it seems like it would be better to keep the flies away from your honey and eat the honey yourself. Like, I get it's symbolic, but it seems like the things we're using... It seems like something I do want to have and keep and use. Being infected by something I don't want to have in the thing I want. Ruining both the thing I want and having a bunch of stuff I don't want in it. What I'm saying is, flies in your honey ruins your honey. Cora question, how can the Knights Templar have done so much, still be in existence, and people not know all that they have done? Now, I'm wondering if this question asker is talking about the bad guys from the Assassin's Creed series, because maybe they've conflated the fact that Assassin's Creed is a game, a series of games that takes place in historical settings. And many big events and real historical people are included in those games. But the important thing to know is they are not actually factual, because the structure of the question kind of answers the question. This is an interesting thing that they've done. How can the Knights Templar have done so many things, still be in existence, and people don't know? Well, there is the answer that the Knights Templar didn't do so many things. The Knights Templar are not still in existence, which is why people don't know what they've done. It's very possible they didn't do all those things you think they did. Certainly they didn't do all the things in the Assassin's Creed games. Perhaps they are not still in existence. Perhaps they never really were in existence in the way you think they were. Because the stories, the myths of the Knights Templar and the Freemasons and all these other secret groups have all gotten blown out of proportion. So this is one of those questions that the logical structure of the question actually provides the question asker with an answer to their own question. The Knights Templar either didn't do so many things or they are not still in existence because otherwise people would know of all the things they have done. Cora question, after hugging my therapist twice, in brackets, I asked, he told me that he can't hug me anymore because it's forbidden in therapy. Did he act professionally? Now this question immediately made me furious. And it's because this is a thing that has started to bother me more and more about humans and life. And it's when ever something goes wrong, they want to blame someone else first. So everything's always someone else's fault. That's a pretty normal thing. That's, I think that's normal for human beings to want to blame others for things when they go wrong. If you actually look at this question really carefully, all the evidence that this person is psychotic is right there. So basically... It starts with, I asked my therapist to do something. My therapist did it. I had no complaints. Then my therapist didn't do it. And now I want to complain that my therapist is unprofessional. So when I was getting what I wanted, regardless if it was right or wrong, that was okay. But when I no longer got what I wanted, which was hugging my therapist, now I want to accuse them of being unprofessional. I want to punish them. That to me demonstrates that this person is a manipulative psychopath because if they don't get what they want, they want to start punishing other people. Now, this is their therapist. This is a person. They're supposed to trust them. And yet now they're attacking the therapist because they don't get what they want. So you can assume that that should be extrapolated to their whole life. If they don't get what they want from the people around them, they then try to manipulate them and get them in trouble 
to make sure that they always get their way. It says that they hugged twice. Now, maybe the first hug was just, you know, conciliatory. Like, you want a hug? Okay, I'll give you a hug. And the second time, I believe at that point something changed. The therapist realized that this was a form of manipulation as well. Because they are trying to create an emotional connection that doesn't exist for me. Or there is the risk that they are finding me attractive and want to do more. Because I'm their therapist and I'm always warm and kind to them because that's my job. But they don't realize that that's why I'm doing it. So they're reading into it more than I am. So I have to block this behavior off so that we are no longer in this situation. So they don't misinterpret and end up with crushed feelings because I don't actually love them. I'm not interested in them. But... I bet more realistically, the therapist realized this person who is manipulative by nature is now trying to manipulate me, so I need to stop that. So either A, I can help them, or B, not be manipulated in the future. But you can see that there's only one goal of this question, and that is to find a way to see if they can punish the therapist for not continuing to hug them, even though that is inappropriate. So you manipulative psycho... Yes, you need therapy, but I think you need therapy behind glass windows. Drukpa Kunli is a very, very interesting man from history. He is a Chinese Buddhist. He lived from 1455 to 1529, so it was quite a while ago. He introduced Buddhism to Bhutan. You may have heard about Bhutan because it is one of the only countries that actually has what they call the happiness index, where the well-being of the countrymen is a valued measure by the government. And this, I believe, goes back to our friend Drukpa, because he is so influential on the nation as a whole. They have images of Kunli on top of their houses to protect them from demons. And the thing is... Kunli was famous for beating demons to death with his penis. Now, he didn't really do that because while his penis is renowned for its excellence, uh, it was still a human penis and you couldn't beat a demon to death with it. But also, there's no such thing as demons. So we don't really have to worry about those elements because we want to talk about the man, the real man, who... I respect primarily because of his incredibly anti-establishment attitude and the fact that he's kind of renowned for his penis now. This was one of those guys who wanted to break down every system he came across. He believed that enlightenment could be attained through other means. So you had Buddhism, you had traditional Buddhists, and they had the different ways you could become enlightened. And it was meditation and different things. And it was all very dour, is maybe the way you'd want to put it. Kunli believed that there were multiple ways to attain enlightenment. It might actually be different for every person. That enlightenment was a thing that was, that was attainable by all. And that's important because this is like any church or any organization. What they want to do is actually gate off the achievement that they're promising so that you have to go through their process. And their process usually involves giving them stuff. If not money directly, it's going to be something else, a food or something. If enlightenment can be achieved by a multitude of ways that actually disenfranchises, disempowers the church. And in this case, the Buddhist religion is the church. And they did have just as much organization as any other religious sect in the world. Now, it turns out that Kunli, maybe another reason I I quite enjoy him as a human being, because he takes everything I would like to do a step further. He actually does a lot of those things. But he had a a penchant for the ladies. He, he, He appreciated an attractive woman, as do I. In fact, His moniker, after he died, he was called the Saint of 5,000 Women. Now, we don't know if that was a real number, but again, these things tend to be inflated. I don't want to make myself feel bad because I haven't come that close. So women often sought his blessing, and he gave his blessing in the form of sex. So he basically had sex with women to bless them, which made it very clear that this was voluntary because he didn't go out seeking these women. They came to him. Most Buddhists believe that celibacy was necessary to attain enlightenment. And Kunli did not believe this. In fact, he went out of his way to prove otherwise. He wanted you to have a healthy sex life. He wanted people to be happy. You didn't have to sacrifice yourself or your happiness to attain enlightenment. You could be who you are and still achieve this goal of enlightenment. Which, of course, if you've done that, is no longer a goal anymore. 
So because so much of this is focused on his penis, of course his penis had to have a nickname. And that's, again, one of those points where I'm not necessarily jealous, but I am like envious. I don't know what the right word is. I have this whole thing about jealousy because I think part of jealousy is that you want to take something away from someone else. And I never feel that. I never actually want to take stuff away from other people, but I might want to have the same thing that they have. So let's say it's fame or money or something. I don't want them to lose their fame and me to become famous. I don't want them to lose their money. I want us both to be rich and famous or whatever, those kind of goals. So when we're talking about Kunli's penis, I don't want him to lose the moniker or the reputation that he's achieved. I just kind of want the same thing. It's, it's weird. It's kind of like when you think about music and there's like beef between artists and stuff. When that is completely irrelevant because it's not like someone who listens to a band only listens to one band and if they start listening to a different band have to stop listening to the previous earlier band. People tend to listen to multiple things. So it's not like this podcast. If you listen to this podcast, you're not allowed to listen to other podcasts. Uh, you can't. So me being popular wouldn't take away from someone else, just like if I don't need to take away from some other podcast to be popular myself. But that's me sort of circling around the nickname that Kunli's penis had, which was the Thunderbolt of Flaming Wisdom. Now, when I heard that, it is an, it is an impressive name. I've never had a nickname that hit that level, but it is an impressive name. The thing is, for me now in modern times, and this might be the problem, is it's like 500 years later. Thunderbolt of Flaming Wisdom sounds like an STD. It sounds like a particularly bad STD to me. But that's because if you put flaming as an idea in the same thought process as penis, I now think of a sexually transmitted diseases. Because most of the ones I've heard about have involved inflammation or burning when you pee or something like that. So it is a terribly amazing name. Thunderbolt is a great one. Thunderbolt of Wisdom would be pretty good. Thunderbolt of Flaming Wisdom. It's the flaming that kind of puts me off a bit. But here are my talk. Here's me talking. I don't have a nickname for my penis. Or if there is, I've never heard it. So maybe the few sad ladies out there who have experienced my penis have a nickname and it's not as... Um, so what I would like to do now is read you poem about happiness. I am happy that I am a free yogi. So I grow more and more into my inner happiness. I can have sex with many women because I help them to go the path of enlightenment. Outwardly, I am a fool and inwardly, I live with a clear spiritual system. Outwardly, I enjoy wine, women, and song. And inwardly, I work for the benefit of all beings. Outwardly, I live for my pleasure. And inwardly, I do everything in the right moment. Outwardly, I am a ragged beggar and inwardly, a blissful Buddha. So it's a really busy time at my work, and I, I realize that uh, that makes me less creative overall. I don't have the time to sit down and think or read or watch stuff and then actually have ideas and talk about them in any sort of real way. So it's guys like Drukpa that actually kind of inspire me because this was a guy who spent his whole life fighting against the system, trying to break down the system and make it available to common people knew what he wanted out of life, and got it. Because if you wanted his blessing, you had to bring him wine and a woman. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean he had sex with that woman, because they never explain what bring him a woman means. I think there's an implication there, but it doesn't actually mean he had sex with them every time. Maybe he just liked having pretty women around when he was drinking his wine. But if you wanted a blessing, you had to bring a woman with you. But if you strip away all the sex stuff, which is why he's been remembered so clearly, because people like that do get remembered. He actually just had a purity of thought. He had something he wanted to achieve. He had something he wanted to bring into the world. And that was actually a benefit for all people. And it was something that I weirdly appreciate, even though I don't live this lifestyle at all. I don't know what my conclusion... And there's a conclusion here for me, and it's weirdly introspective... And that's why I'm shying away from trying to say it. Because I don't do any of these things, but maybe I aspire towards them. And I kind of hope that everyone who listens to this does as well. Because if you actually forget 
the thunderbolt of flaming wisdom, what you're actually left with is a guy who is trying to make enlightenment available to everybody. And I have a real appreciation for that. The loss of 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 podcast. The loss of podcast. Hey, sexy friend. He's making me his bitch. Thank you for listening. If you have questions or comments, you can tweet at Velosi Peter or email Velosi Podcast at gmail.com. You can find the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Acast, or go to velocipeter.com slash podcast.